Okay, cool. Uh, we're live. Uh, so welcome to the October committee meeting, everybody. And um, we'll do our usual introductions uh, and I'll start off. So I'm Owen and I'm the chair of JavaScript New Zealand. Um, yep, uh, Alex, do you want to go next? I am Alex. I am the treasurer. Okay, Anna. I pick Jen. Oh, sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Jen, and I'm a general committee member. Hi, I'm Anna, I'm a member. Hi, I'm James, general member. And hi, I'm Craig, general member too. Cool. We have everybody. Uh, so awesome welcome to the October committee meeting. So um, we don't have a huge agenda to get through, but uh, as Jen has suggested previously, uh, one good tool might be just to uh, go through the issues that we've got in the, um, the committee meetings uh, GitHub and see uh, which ones are actionable or um, delayable. Um, right, so I guess we've got three on ice, so I'll leave those alone. Um, We'll start off with the, which way should we go? Should we go from oldest first? Um, okay, uh, one opened by Alex on August 24th last year called Get History on Slack. Did we ever make a decision around this? Uh, from memory, Ryan said that there was the admin that had to get in touch with the nonprofit organization that Slack passes over the uh, free accounts too, and I just never did that. So that's on my head. Um, yeah, uh, we can pick it up. It should be relatively trivial. We just have to email this organisation, say who we are, why we deserve it, and hopefully they give us a free plan. Okay, so uh, is that on you, Alex? That's on the admin of the Slack account. So if anyone can log in as the admin through LastPass, then anyone can do it. But I don't know, okay. who, where is well, the admin kept? Uh, it's in LastPass, so we we all have access to that. Um, actually, jumping into a side issue here, uh, you might remember that a couple of months ago we discussed that uh, LastPass um, has a maximum number of people that it can be shared with, and it didn't even stretch the original committee. So I'm pretty sure that anybody joined two years ago on the committee probably doesn't have access to it, um, which is not good. Uh, I've got an update on that front in a minute. Um, but putting aside that um, issue for now, um, Anybody could do this because you can just go and ask somebody to give you the credentials, um, worst case scenario, which I know is not ideal, but it works for now. Okay, well, um, how about I assign that to myself and I'll take it up. Okay, I will assign that to me. Okay, next on the issues list is uh, next year's conference. Um, so do you want to give me a quick, or Jen, do you want to jump in with a quick heads up as to where we are? Yeah, um, well, I don't have an update um, because it's obviously um, Stevie that's been steering things. Um, and I know that he was it was in his intention and he did ask me a couple of questions about looking for venues, uh, but I actually can't provide an update on that. Um, and because of the AGM, uh, it has been a little while since we received an update. So my suggestion is, seeing as um, Stevie's not able to make it this evening, is that we just um, ask him to give us an update in the committee channel um, at some point over the next week or so, um, just so that we're all in the loop there with what's going on. Cool. Uh, I'm going to close the issue itself, I think. Uh, we kind of have an ownership for that conference. Uh, yeah, there was one new question on that one, I think, um, from memory. Let me just... Richard have... Lopez has asked yes. if he can help. So why don't we say I will reply to him and just give him a pointer towards some places he could start um, asking those questions more usefully, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, close that for now. Great, that sounds perfect. Cool. I will assign that one to you. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, so issue number 58, I believe. Uh, sorry, 56. Uh, should we as a society be neutral on matters? Did we, we had a good discussion around this, I think, didn't we? I'm yeah, wondering. I think we can probably call that one close now unless anybody has a disagreement on that. Oh, yeah, we can close did it, we... but we could we just talk about what the outcome was? Yeah, that's about us. Did we do we ever have like a, a sort of like a proper outcome from that? Well, given the fact that we sent an email a letter to Dunedin um about their intern program, I think that we're not neutral on things now. <laughs> To my memory, we discussed it a bunch. Uh, we said that we are inherently not neutral. We are what our code of conduct says we are. Um, and uh, that if anybody was making statements on political-ish positions, so that would usually go through a committee meeting first. But for anything that is explicitly called out in the code of conduct, then that is our position. Uh, so we have. I have. I've just got the notes up from our uh, April committee meeting uh, where we discussed it. Um, so it says, uh, and I'll read these out. Uh, As a result of a tweet, the question was raised that the committee should remain neutral on all topics. Jen noted uh, that we are not already just by having a code of content. Jen also noted an anecdotal story about grey areas. Talked about dealing with it on a case by case basis. Anna brought up that we have an opinion about something when we have to make a decision. Uh, and those messages should be made as a committee, not just one person. Hopefully that jogs people's memory and that 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 do we need to add anything to that kind of if maybe you could either link to that where you read that or just copy and paste that bit onto the note and onto the ticket and close it. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Okay, next one. Uh, speaking at Overseas Conference Fund, I don't think we came up with a solution around this one. Anna, do you want to talk about it? Uh, I've got some ideas, some, made some research. I just need time to put it down on somewhere, just type it and to discuss it, to show it to the committee and then discuss it. Just let me get, uh, give me some time. Okay, no worries. Um, but I'll assign that issue to you, uh, and maybe you can just make a comment when you're ready to, to discuss it at the next committee meeting. Uh, transcription of NZJSCon videos. Yeah, so uh, we did end up with some leftover money, but we mostly decided that it should go towards the next conference. Um, I'm still keen to have the transcripts kind of happen, but I think there was an action on me um, to get the existing auto transcribed ones and see how good they were. So um, yeah, maybe put that one back on my my radar and I'll I'll uh, try and chase that up and come up with a proper update for for next month. How does that sound? Great. On that one, could we just ask speakers to? write them out like i'd be happy to do it for mine i'm sure others would be the same it wouldn't take that long if we all did our own ones uh yeah i think um at least one speaker has done that already um in fact she she wrote her thing up as an entire separate article which was really cool um i really want to be able to offer people the auto translated um things as a starter point um rather than just saying hey go do this go again to a task um and uh so yeah knowing if i can get those out of the system is kind of a prerequisite i think cool uh okay the next one open is number 59 which is forming working groups to address areas needing improvement from alex did we ever yeah. discuss this one you know what i can't even remember the outcome if we even did discuss this. I think we did, but I just don't remember the outcome of it. Uh, OK, so I've got the same uh, same committee meeting as last time where we discussed it. Uh, so after the call to action at Alex's NJS Con, there was a big response. Thinking about forming working groups based on the themes Alex is starting to notice. Topics so far include inclusivity, 
uh, mentorship, education, and networking, and each one of those has some subpoints. Um, Jen suggested using some sort of consensus or online-based tool to sort. James talked about using GitHub tags. Uh, Owen and Jen said code of conduct violations can be escalated to us, and there is a reporting channel. So I think that was around the um, the moderators. So I'm not quite sure that last one quite fits in, but um, yeah, I'm not sure we actually made any final decisions, did we? Right. So the interesting one is a lot of this stuff's happened already and is still happening. Um, so we've got the likes of Roger Nesbitt, who started um, Winter of Mentor, um, a mentorship program. You got uh, James Pluck, who started um, the, and, and Jess, who started the Wellington uh, Mental Health Meetup. And there's already a mental health meetup in Auckland running. So there was a few things that that kicked off, uh, just not inherently like part of the society. It was just on the fringes. There's a lot of promotion on our Slack. Um, so I think that's a, a win. It's probably more of a win. Like they they could still use our code of conduct, but the fact that we ha we don't have to use our bandwidth to run those things is great. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to leave it at that. Uh, if people do want to run similar kind of themes through the society, I'd be more than happy to see a issue open up and we can talk about it in depth. Cool. So I'll close this one. Uh, yeah. I'll mark that we discuss it in April and give a link to it uh, and just say that more things have kicked off since then. Does that sound good now? Um, I think it really might be really nice just if someone could work uh, maybe at Euclid, Alex, I don't think it would take you very long just to link to those two specific things that you mentioned so that people who are interested in that discussion can follow up in that way to Winter Mentor and to um, the mental health group. Yeah, I was actually thinking about writing a blog post about this a few weeks ago. Um, do we have blog capabilities on the site? That might be a question for James. Uh, yeah, we do. We haven't got it hooked up anywhere, but we can. Well, I can certainly sort that out. Well, maybe, maybe I'll just throw it up on Medium and somehow create a JavaScript New Zealand account. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean that, yeah, yeah. We can always link that to the site from the site anyway. Okay, I'll put that on my to-do list. I'll I'll put links to the two things that I spoke about as per Jen's request, but I'll probably write up a blog post about it all. Uh, so I've assigned that issue to you, Alex, if you just put a link into there when you've written what you're going to write and then close that issue, that'd be fantastic. Uh, okay, number 61, create a better onboarding process so people are aware of our society code of conduct and rules. I believe this is implemented now, isn't it, James? You have to tick the boxes. You have to tick the boxes when you're signing up. But I was wondering whether, just reading the issue, if that came up because people have there's a difference between ticking the boxes when you sign up to be a member, but you don't have to be a paid member to be part of the Slack channel. Uh, and that ticket at the start specifically mentions violations on the Slack channel. Um, did Samson ever set up, didn't he set up a bot that was going to do periodic reminders? Um, and I wonder if there was something similar we could use for new members on Slack. We, if you yeah. could, is there something like that? I don't think the bot ever got set up. Um, okay. Not bot, but the, his, from time to time he manually does it. Oh, okay. So the bot. Do you know if we can? Does, it, or does anyone know if we can? Um, if you join our Slack, whether you just join and that's it, or whether there is, we can set up an intermediary step, which outlines some of the stuff. I've joined a couple of Slacks that ask me to tick the box for if I, to follow their code of conduct. Okay. Okay. We're using a separate application for our uh, app is kind of stretching it a bit for our Slack um, sign up process. I think it's called Slack in something like that. Um, I've always had a bit of a problem with it in that it camps on the domain name. Um, that's quite easy to remember instead of the Slack one uh, and doesn't actually have a link to the Slack channel itself. So I've always found that a little bit poor. So if we were replacing it, maybe there's a couple of UX improvements we could make at the same time. So, so why do we use the, the Slack in? Are the, like what's the, why it can't we just us, use the 
Sure, it gives us anonymous signups is the key feature. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, the only way that you previously you could sign up to Slack was somebody inviting you in. Um, oh, whereas this is self service. Um, okay. So I'll I'll ask Samson on the issue if he's created a repeating bot for uh, for posting mm -hmm. the the messaging that we created, uh, and then um, I'll also put in that we need to think about replacing Slack in. Uh, I think there was another issue that yeah. we're going to come to, which is about upgrading Slack in. And I don't know if that allows you to put that tick box or not. Um, and we'll we'll investigate. So I'll comment on that and I'll assign it to Samson for now. Okay. Next issue is uh, create a single point of communication to anyone wanting moderation in Slack. Uh, we did we ever create aliases? Does anybody know? From memory, the aliases were only available to paid Slack. Right. And I may be wrong there, but I have a memory of that, which we kind of may, which may go hand in hand with the history Slack. If we can get that bumped during the bed charity, then we may get that for free as well. Another thing we have, we put um, those icons uh, with the JS uh, Slack uh, or with JavaScript um, logo, but we haven't announced it in the Slack. Maybe we just should announce it a couple of times, just people know what it means. <laughs> Does everyone have the logo against you now? I don't think that I do. I think I missed um, that month's committee meeting, so I didn't get the memo on that front. So we need to announce it in the committee channel so that we all set it, uh, and anybody who's missed it knows about it, and then we need to announce it in the general channel. Second, uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'll assign that one to me, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, okay. The next issue is exactly the upgrading of Slack in the Slack in app. Uh, I created the Slack in app and hosting it on Heroku, so I can I can grab that one and look at upgrading it. And see what we can get and the comment on there is exactly that same thing that i was asking for it says later versions have a sign in button which takes you to the slack url so yay okay. yes I, I wanted to write the developer comment to fix this an issue um helps with issue there's something uh one Okay. Uh, Slack moderators, we didn't ever nominate or get anybody nominating themselves to be moderators, did we? I think we asked and nobody put themselves forward. I'm not sure that if we even asked or it was so quiet, quiet, so it really needs to be done at the most busiest time and a few times, definitely, so it's seen by people who love to and to show that we really need it, that we need their help. It's not just a thing we would like to have. That's what we really need to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Are we still finding that, yeah, are we still finding that we would, we would need extra moderators apart from ourselves? I think it's a good idea to have somebody who's a moderator or a committee member online most of the time. So, we can't guarantee coverage between us all. I mean, while it's quiet, that's a that's not quite the the level of security that I want over this issue. I think another, another thing: these moderators are future committee members, and uh, just show that the site is active, and we just want to involve more people in um, uh, just in doing things, not just being watching from the site. <laughs> okay, I've assigned that issue to me, and I'll repost the. A plea in general and ask people to 
to sign up to this issue if they're interested in becoming moderators. And I'll do that semi-regularly uh, until we get a good quorum of moderators. Does that sound good to everybody? Cool. Okay, okay. Uh, so the renaming of the Dunedin City Council internship program. Uh, so I wrote the letter uh, and haven't actually sent the letter. I do apologize to everybody. Um, I need to know, do we have a, a letter heading, sorry, a set of stationery or anything that we've used for JavaScript New Zealand in the past? Don't think so. Okay, so I need to go and do we, we have a standard seal, don't we? We have a, like a official logo that we use. Yep. I might be able to send you some sponsorship documents that may have like footers and, and logos in it. Cool, that'll be good. Um, and I'll get that sent out this week. Uh, so can people, I'm gonna ask everybody just to bug me every day until I've said, yes, I've sent it. Cause that just dropped off my uh, to-do list um, pretty badly. There's I apologize a, for not sending that out. There's a repo in um, the uh, committee, the JavaScript NZ organization that contains all the logo files. Perfect. Uh, I will make that my first to do on Tuesday when I'm when I'm not on vacation with my kids. Cool. Um, right. The final open issue is to make committee voting anonymous. So I have a suggestion for this one, which is that we have had requests of this sort of thing, not necessarily exactly this issue, but similar issues about the voting at the AGM a couple of times. And the problem is that, you know, we, we get asked it immediately after the AGM and none of us put it really on our radar because we're like, okay, I can wait until the next AGM, but then it gets a bit too late and we don't get around to it. So I would really love to find a way of finding some way in the GitHub issues of flagging this issue so it will come up in like May next year, something like that. Um, any suggestions on that front? Can you do a Slack reminder for like six six months in advance? Like remind me in six months. I don't know. I, I'm going to do it. I'll just, just tell her. Just, we'll just see. <laughs> I just wondered about the whole issue because when we have like AGMs at music school, social clubs or whatever, they're real time AGMs. People are in the hall and they're voting there with their hands and it's definitely not anonymous. And it's, that, it's, and it's how it's usually done. It's like yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, Ooh, I've got a bit of an echo there suddenly. Uh, thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, so uh, I actually commented on the um, ticket about this one. And I said that, you know, on the societies that I've been in in the past, we've actually needed to know people's real names so that we can make sure that they're um, committee members. Um, and again, I, I think that sort of detracts from the anonymization. Um, but I think the real issue that um, the person that raised this was trying to get to is that they can feel like they can vote no against somebody um, without getting uh, like social stigma against that. Um, and I think there might be some ways that we can address that um, without going full on anonymity. Um, but again, I just don't think now is quite the right time to discuss it. Yeah, I, I think there's, um, there's definitely a good conversation to have and I think we should do it just slightly in advance of our AGM so that we've at the point where we've got committee members nominated we know how they're going to be voted but not much before then do we need to kind of know how that system's going to work. Uh, shall I make a new tag on the GitHub issue? Um, for Maybe that? an AGM tag and we can bring it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's the final open issue. Um, any, uh, so first of all, have we got any financial updates, Alex? Uh, not really. I was gonna say that since James opened up the Stripe integration, we've had 35 members sign up. So 
quick maths would say we've got $875 of revenue coming from memberships this year, which is great. I think um, it's possibly almost hit our target. I got to remember if the target was $1,000 or $1,400. So it's either hit our target or it's over halfway, well over halfway. Cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll help us pay the accountant next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, has anybody else got any other business they want to raise as a committee while we're together? Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I'll have to raise an issue for it because we talked about it previously, but I did obviously failed to raise an issue, which is that about the password manager being able to get more committee members access to it because if, you know, there was a uh, something that needed admin powers on the Slack channel and one of the older members wasn't available, that's kind of shitty. So um, unfortunately, password managers, unless you want to pay them lots and lots of team monies, are not super great for this purpose um but i think so i think what we're going to have to do is i'll set up a free last pass account and like physically give you all the password to that account we can share that one out to some people but the the only way to scale it to the right number of people is going to be to actually just you log into that account for LastPass, which I realize is not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to manually transfer all of the accounts from the old one to the new one, um, because um, we we have lost administrator rights to the old folder. Um, and I have checked with the person that set that up originally, and they haven't been able to recover admin rights to it either. Um, so I think this is probably safer in the long run as well. Um, in the past, I've done a cheap alternative is using one pass and Dropbox. Um, it worked okay. Like since we don't have much churn in passwords, you just you create a new password, push it onto Dropbox, tell everyone about it. They can pull it down to get it, and they'll use that new Vault file from then on. So nice. I don't know if it's an if it's on the agenda to start from scratch. Um, Oh, yeah. So that one on the table. Yeah, I, I personally um, don't touch Dropbox with a barge pole, so I personally wouldn't be super happy with that solution. But uh, I'll investigate that one as well. Oh, S three, if you want I mean, anything, right? Okay, I will. Uh, I will say that I'm gonna leave this one in Jen's capable hands uh, and we'll aim to have a solution before the next committee meeting. Does that sound doable? Yes, I'm actually setting it up as we speak because it turns out doing it at the same time as the committee meeting is the best way for me to remember to do things. We all know how that feels. Perfect. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else got any other business that they want to raise today? Okay, well, we'll call that a nice and quick committee meeting, half an hour. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for sparing some time on your Sunday. Uh, we'll meet up again next month. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone.